Okay, so I have learned a couple things in using newer technology, aka the latest and greatest from Intel to build an Unraid server to run Plex. I know, Unraid and Plex, that's oddly specific, but the point is, remember that thing about the 4K transcoding stuff that I said that it's a little stupid and that you shouldn't do it? <clears throat> about that. I'm not quite there yet. I don't want to actually say transcoding 4K is a good idea. It kind of hits me in the pit of the stomach when I say that. I legitimately still think that transcoding 4K is a bad idea. Just overall, there's a lot of bottlenecks that you could run into, issues that you could have just based off of using a larger file. And I know a lot of people say you shouldn't be transcoding at all, but that's the whole point of a Plex media server. That's the whole point of the hardware that we mess with. That way we can transcode. It's not that we want to but we can. But even though I don't actually want to say 4K is a good idea, I'm at that point now where I can say 4K is not a terrible idea. It's a really thin line. <laughs> This is a test bench with an Intel 13900K. It has 128 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM running at 5200 megahertz. That's sitting on an ASUS ProArt Creator motherboard that's actually running a Z690 chipset. Ultimately, this thing will be water cooled, but for right now, I just bought an air cooler mainly because I didn't want to set up a water cooling thing, but I still set up an XMP profile, pushing this thing to 5.8 gigahertz. It has eight performance cores with hyper-threading and 16 efficiency cores, and it has the embedded UHD 770 graphics from Intel. This is where I get a little moist in my eyes. Hopefully that didn't get me demonetized. It got me all hot and bothered because Unraid officially supports the UHD 770 now. And now that I can set up Plex with Unraid, it gives me an upgrade path to upgrading my main server, which this is kind of a mock-up, kinda. Right now it's a testing ground and then it will be my main workstation computer. But going back to what I learned with using these new relevant parts is that, well, whenever I do build out my main server, I'm probably gonna be just fine with the 12th gen Intel. Really, in my current server, I don't have any high PCIe demand, so a Z790 is not necessary. 690 it is. I have 128 gigs of RAM because I want this as a workstation. Also, because I actually had a misconception thinking that I would need more than 32 gigs of RAM if I wanted to really flex the integrated graphics processing power. And I mean really stretch it by using 4K transcoding. I went with 4K transcoding because really when it comes down to 1080p testing, it's just not realistic anymore. <laughs> Spoiler alert, if I were to math and try to give you a basic idea of how many 1080p's this could potentially do, it would be in the rough range of 72 to 90 different streams. That many streams brings up a lot of variables on my end for errors and reliability. And then the discover hits you in the face. 4K transcoding is actually not that bad. The 13900K has the UHD 770 graphics. The 12900K has the UHD 770 graphics. So if you're just looking at doing hardware accelerated transcoding in Plex or something similar, then the 12s and the 13s, pretty much the same thing. Yes, there's gonna be a little bit of performance difference, possibly just based off the CPU, but you know, that's really if you're just pushing it to the max. Hardware accelerated transcoding using the system memory for the transcode, I just figured maybe I'm probably gonna need up to 64 gigs, maybe not all of the 64 gigs, but at least 40 or more in order to do a lot of transcoding. However, that was not the case. During my test, I did not go over 32 gigs worth of usage, which is a little weird, but also kind of nice. That lets me know that, hey, in the future, whenever I build this, I'm still gonna get 128 gigs because I have absolutely no respect for money. But at least now I know for sure that I definitely probably don't need it. 
the testing file. Back to the future, of course, but this time it's the 4K version, HEVC 5.1 main 10, a file size of 44 gigabytes, just to give you an idea. And that's running at a total of 55 megabits per second, 49 of which are dedicated directly just to the video portion. A solid 4K video file running at 3840 by 2076 resolution. And in my test, I transcoded all the way down to four megabits per second. I should probably note that I ran my Unraid server off of SSDs. Is that out of frame? That's out of frame, isn't it? Yeah, whatever. Speak of, why are you here? Some people just don't know when to leave. There we go. So your mileage may vary on this, but I used three SSDs, one for the cache, two for the array. I wanted to see how fast it'd rebuild, stupid fast. That was just a small side test of mine, but I wanted to make sure I didn't run into any kind of hard drive limitations. So now that you have the bill, now that you have the video file, let me tell you the number. It's magical, it's 4K, and it was 18. 18 different streams. That's reliable streams. This actually took a while to test because I had to recreate it. I had to stop it, replay it again, make sure it was sustaining itself, make sure none of the streams were actually buffering or restarting or freezing up or anything like that. And also because I kind of sort of just started watching Back to the Future. 18 though was the magic number. I could start 19 with very occasional micro buffers randomly. 20 gave me more buffers. I just made up micro buffers. I don't know if that's a thing, but it is now. 20 of them was definitely less reliable. It wasn't a usable experience. 19 of them was possible. Somebody might get a little micro buffer here and there, but it's not that big of a deal. 18 on the other hand was solid. I was able to watch probably a quarter of the movie and not once did I see one of the video files start to buffer. I will say this, however, whenever I get to 16 to 18, somewhere around there, loading up a new movie, navigating through the Plex screen, stuff like that, it starts to get a little laggy. The way this sits now, if I had to like define what is stupid when it comes to like having video files to transcode just in case you have to, and like what should you keep, what should you build for, etc. I start to think to myself like, what is that definition? Well, if you have an Intel 12th or 13th gen or maybe in the future 14 or whatever, and it can run one 4K transcoded video file without actually feeling it, right? Because it can do 18 of them. That's a pretty big step. Because 18, yeah, I mean, technically you feel it and it technically is going to take some resources, but you can do 18 of them. So if you can do 5% on one 4K transcoding stream, how many streams are you doing? Are you doing less than 15? Are they all transcoded or I also have to consider this or better yet, the lack thereof. Because this runs all off of the CPU, it has the integrated graphics, I do not need a video card, which means all of the power that this takes to run is now gone. Underload this entire build, bear in mind, this is just SSDs, not a bunch of hard drives. There's a lot of like variables here, but underload, I didn't see it reach over 200, like maybe 20-ish, but it mainly sat at 200 and just idling is 40 to 50 watts. 40 to 50 watts. Under stress, 200. Chillin' no killin' idle, 49. Let me give you an idea. So if it's using 50 watts consistently, at least 50 watts, that is 1.2 kilowatt hours per month. Now it's 200 watts. If it was stressed all of the time, that's 4.8 kilowatt hours per month. My server right now chills out at like 600 watts. It has hard drives in it, yes, but it stresses out at over a thousand to 1200 watts. If you're like five, 600 watts, just hanging out, right? That's 14.4 kilowatt hours per month. My local energy rate for 14.4 kilowatt hours is $35 a month. $35 a month versus this one, chilling all month, $3 per month. If I was stressing the server, it would be closer to 60 or $70 a month just for my server. If I'm stressing this server, it's closer to 12. Ultimately, I'm not gonna be upgrading my hardware to save all of the money back in electricity. However, electricity consumption equals heat. So, you know, there's that. That means your room is gonna be a lot cooler, which means it takes way less effort to keep everything going which means graphics cards are cool if you have a use for them in a server, but if you don't, then 
maybe just not do that. Before 4K transcoding was just dumb in my mind, almost stupid. I'm going with stupid. Now I'm just thinking maybe not as stupid. Now I'm thinking that maybe if I wanted to slowly start upgrading all of my content to 4K, if I wanted to watch 4K video files primarily as my main source of video, that maybe that's not a terrible idea. I mean, I won't be able to pull 18 transcoded streams off of a single hard drives when it comes to a 4K video file, and I have no plan to. Like, again, the whole bottleneck thing, all SSDs. I mean, hard drives, SSDs, there's a big difference. So it's not time yet to start switching everything over to 4K. But maybe, just maybe, it's not stupid. Well guys, I have a few more tests in mind that I wanna do on this build before I erase everything and start doing the other things I wanna do with it. So if you guys have any questions, comments, or testing ideas, make sure to post those in the comment section down below. One of the biggest things I really want to focus on actually is going to be the 4K folder. Is that a still a thing? I wanna do some tests to see how the automatic switching is between different files, what the structure looks like, how reliable is that? Like how well could you integrate 4K into your main library? And does that play well with the R's, if you know what I mean? So make sure to like and subscribe below. As always, thank you for watching and have yourself a great day. <clears throat> I like mixed it up, almost messed it up. I wanna be the first time, but I said it out of order. Like and subscribe if you have any questions. As always, have a good day. Yeah, that was weird. <laughs>